Hi, it's Kasha McDaniel, and I am a home stager decorator, and you're listening to the Creative Home Podcast, where I talk about staging and decorating and all things associated with your home. So take a listen. Hello and welcome. Good morning. My name is Kasha. Welcome to the Creative Home Podcast. I'm so thankful you guys are out there listening. I um, actually had a chance to talk to one of my listeners over email, um, give me some tips and some questions that she had and things like that. And Amy, I am so thankful and grateful for all your input. Um, and I heard that you use a lot of my podcasts to help you stage your house. So that is fantastic. I'm so glad that you found these tips to be useful. So thank you so much for letting me know. Um, Well, today I actually went and got my haircut because I've needed to get one for a while. And with COVID and all the craziness, um, especially when shops were shut down, um, some of you know, we live in Germany. um, And so a lot with the numbers rising and things like that several months ago, um, the rule was after you got to a certain amount of COVID infections that the stores would shut down, specifically like hair salons and things like that. So you're kind of wondering, well, <laughs> how do I get a haircut? You know, I'm just a simple thing. We had to fend for ourselves for a little while there. And fend, I did, yes, I had my husband cut my hair. And you're probably thinking, oh dear God, what? <laughs> you had your husband cut your hair? Yes, yes I did. Um, and luckily it's not really that difficult. I don't need it to be layered or anything. It's just short. Um, and so it, I just wanted him to cut it straight across. And I'm like, I just need you just cut straight across. I'll take care of my bangs by my face and I'll take care of that part. He's like, okay, I can cut a straight line, right? So yeah, and yeah, he did. (laughs) But now that my hair is kind of outgrowing and um, I really like going to a professional who actually knows what they're doing. Not that my husband doesn't, but he is not a hairstylist. So he can cut a straight line, which is fantastic. Um, But yeah, so it pays to go to a stylist who knows how to take care of hair, the different styles that are out there and things like that. So the same thing goes for home staging. When you you can do some of the stuff yourself, but sometimes you're like, you know what? I just need the decorative eye to tell me what I need to do. So this episode is brought to you by 30 Easy Tips to get your house ready to sell. I have a free download where if you are selling your house this fall, this is a great checklist to go through and get you started on what you need to do to get your house ready to sell. And take a look at my other podcast, take a listen. Um, Most of them are about 10 minutes long or so, where if you need to know how to stage a bathroom or a living room or kitchen or something, there's tips in there for you to use as well. So let's get started on today's podcast. Uh, Today, I wanna talk about updating your kids' bedroom decor. Now, some of you have kids that, you know, maybe you have had them, um, you did the styling for them because they were babies, you picked the colors, well, now they're toddlers and they have a voice and they have a say and they're like, well, I don't like that color. (laughs) You're like, wait, what? What's wrong with that? And they talk back at you, (laughs) right? So it's been a few years and you're kind of going, oh, all right, they have a personality, God forbid, right? But yeah, so my nine-year-old, decided that she wanted to change it up a bit. She's tired of the unicorns. She's kind of outgrown the pink, the stuff that we had, the ballerina and things like that in there and castles. And she's like, "Mm, I'm growing out of this phase. So if you have kids that are growing out of their phase of Winnie the Pooh or dinosaurs or something like that, and now they're growing into, well, I'm into skateboards or video games or whatever. And you're like, oh dear God, now what do we do, right? So I'm in that same dilemma as you. And you're kind of wondering, well, how do I do this? What do I need? Where do I need to even begin, right? So I would usually start with the walls uh, because you probably had the walls painted pink or blue or something like that, or uh, there are some kind of a color, maybe a green or something. Um, Because the kids' personalities kind of change a little bit and their, their tastes will definitely change again when they become a teenager. So if you have a neutral background, like a wall color, like a gray or a beige or a white, though that is something I would start with because that is easier to change now once and get it done with because later you're probably gonna be changing things around again and you don't wanna have to change the wall color yet again, okay? Um, 
So starting with a neutral wall color, like a, a beige, a grige, if you will, um, uh, even a, a white, you know, decorator's white is one of, is my favorite white, white wall colors um, by Benjamin Moore. And that one, you take a look at the different whites out there and then <clears throat> bring it up against a sheet of white paper, like printer paper. <clears throat> And the reason why I say you do that, because when you put the color chip paint of what you think is white, and then you put it up against a white piece of paper, like printer paper, you're going to see things that kind of stand out a little bit more. Maybe it's a little more creamier white, more beige white, more yellow white, more blue white. So there's some tints or shades in there. They kind of like, oh, I don't want that color to come out. I want white, white. Yeah, even though it has white in the name, it doesn't mean it's necessarily white. But decorator's white, I found, is a very good white color that is white, white, white. Um, it's not bright white. Um, but I like to use that one also on like trim, um, like around the doorways and stuff like that. Uh, ceiling, even good too, there too. So that's a good white color if you need something like that. <clears throat> okay, so now we're updating your kid's bedroom decor, right? So like I said, mine, she doesn't want, you know, the unicorns and everything in the pink. And she's like, well, I kind of want like more um, green and yellow or purple and yellow. I'm like, okay, well, we kind of had those things in some of the stuff that she had. Um, <clears throat> and the easiest thing that we can change out are the bed sheets. So if you have bed sheets that she had, that I have, she has ones that are pink polka dots. So a pink sheet with white polka dots on it. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't quite go anymore with what she's looking for. I'm like, that's the quickest way to easily change out colors in a bedroom, like the comforter. Um, you could probably keep the comforter, but what you can find is just a duvet cover that is now in your favorite character, color, whatever it is that you're looking for, right? Um, I have another child who's a Marvel fan, so um, they like the more red and black and, and yellow and things like that. So you can still keep the comforter, just find a duvet cover that has is red or is black or has red highlights on it, you know? So there's lots of things that you can do with just bed sheets just to help with their bedroom decor. Okay, so that's one. And then of course, you can always find these things online. Whether you, If you can't find it in the stores nearby, Amazon is fantastic for that. Um, Wayfair is even great for that too, okay? So that may be something you may wanna take a look at, okay? Um, another thing you can do to help is with the is with artwork. You know, so maybe there's some canvas prints or um, poster prints that maybe you can frame or something like that. Um, wall stickers, you know, those are always great because hello, they don't last forever and they're not permanent. So that is another great way to use color in the color that they're looking for. So it may not be a Marvel themed bedroom, but maybe they have already Marvel, you know, pillows or Marvel bobbleheads or a Marvel rug, you know, those kinds of things. So there's lots of things that you don't have to go overboard with Marvel or overboard with purple and yellow like mine is uh, because the furniture is still going to stay the same. So the furniture is still going to be like the basic if you have a, you know, a white bed, you know, bed set or a white dresser. Those still go with everything else. It's just we're just updating the decor, okay? So artwork is another great way that you can do that. Uh, whether they paint it themselves, you know, because sometimes you may have some budding artists that you don't know about. Mine love to paint, and so they actually painted, um, uh, took a canvas thing. It was like a 12 by 12 looking tile, 12 inch by 12 inch type of thing, so it's a pretty decent size. And they put some of their favorite Avengers on there, Marvel signs, helmets, symbols, whatever, and that's what they're doing to decorate it. So it doesn't mean that you have to go buy something you may have a budding artist on your hands and let them have a try at it to add to their room decor, okay? Um, I've already mentioned like rugs. Um, that can be just the color that you're looking for. Again, if you're looking to change the room color, uh, you may not find a marble rug, but you may find a maroon rug or a black rug. Um, but then black tends to show a lot of dirt and, you know, just dust and things like that. So I would kind of stay away from black, but again, up to you <laughs> on how you want to do that. Um, but yeah, so rugs are another great way to add some color and interest. And then finally curtains. If you are a curtain fan, um, 
sometimes I know my kids love it dark in their room. So they really like their room darkening curtains. Um, I found them on Wayfair because they have them like double lined and triple lined sometimes. Um, so you get the color on one side, but it's like white on the other so that um, they can actually pull them closed if you, you know, have hanging curtains in their bedrooms, okay? Um, so that's another way to introduce color to add to update the kids' bedroom decor, okay? And then the last thing you can do is rearrange the furniture in their room. Um, and we, maybe we remove some furniture items or add things. Like maybe if you're, you know, have a teenager type and, you know, find one of those um, bean bags or poofs or something like that, that might be something that, you know, has a green color or a purple color, whatever color you're looking for, they make poofs in so many different colors and shapes and beanbag sizes that would easily fit into a kid's bedroom and they're just happy as can be because it's theirs. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so don't be afraid to try and rearrange it. Maybe put the bed in a different uh, wall. Um, try it, you know, just to see. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't cost you other than time to do it. And you know what? And then you get to work with your child on their room and decorating it. And they're just happy as can be because you were there to, you know, to try different things. You know, it, it doesn't mean that the one way you do it is the only way to do it. You may find that there was something like, hmm, well, that didn't work. Okay, let's put it back to where it was. But you don't know until you try, right? So yeah, so those are my tips that I have for updating your kids' bedroom decor. Um, if you have any questions, take a look at, listen to any other blog or uh, podcast that I have out there. Maybe you need have an empty wall. I have a podcast on you know how to decorate large empty walls. You know, give you some ideas there as well. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and thanks so much for listening. I will talk to you later.